Hi folks, so in this video here we're going to be practicing a junior cycle mock question okay, that came up in a previous mock uh, based on the topic of orthographic projection. Okay, So you can see here it says the image below shows the design of a similar radio, draw part 1 an elevation in the direction of arrow A and then part 2 a plan projected from the elevation and part 3 determine the true shape of surface S. So what you'll actually notice about this one straight away is they're asking us to draw the elevation but they have not asked us to draw the side view, the end elevation. They've only asked us for the elevation, which is the front view, and then the plan, which is when the bird is looking down from the sky, looking down on top of it. So they've only asked us actually for two views here, and then obviously we have to get the part three, then getting the true shape of surface S. So anytime you're doing one of these questions, you would always have to work out your overall height, your length, and your width. Okay, so what's the overall height of the object? You can see here on the outside it's saying it's 125 from here up to here but that is not the overall height because we can see clearly there's an extra button or this little kind of um, dial thing here at the top that's up an extra 15 so it's 125 plus 15 so the height is actually 140 what's the overall length of the object they actually tell us from the left to the right the length is 180 and then what is the overall width of the object so the width of the object here is you can see it's 20 25 and 20 so 20 20 is 40 plus 25 is 65 that only gets us to here and you can see this bit here actually juts out a little bit as well I'm just trying to see there how far that actually juts out does it show us anywhere yeah you can see it there 10 as well so look at 65 plus 10 actually i should have just checked up here so the width is actually 75 so there's our dimensions that we're going to create for our boxes okay so for my elevation usually when we're doing an end view as well or an end elevation beside it arrow a be pointing to the right so the elevation going to the right hand side but in this case because we don't have to do an end elevation it can go in the middle of the page so i'm going to create a box that's 180 long and 140 high so starting off with an xy line just making sure that i have a 140 in height left over so it's about there Actually, I'll come down to about here, yeah. So, right here. So, there we have it. Just making sure I have 18 centimeters in there, yeah. Loads of room. So, this is my X Y line. Okay. Now, on that X Y line, I'm going to mark 180 millimeters, so 0 to 18. Okay. And then, vertical line, vertical line, and on those vertical lines, I'm going to measure the height of 140. So 0 up to 14. Okay, now that I've done that, I've created my box for my elevation. Now, the box for the plan, you usually keep a distance from anywhere from 10 to 20 between your views. So I'm going to mark down about 15. Okay, so I'm actually going to project that down now. Project this one down. Because it's still the same lengths. The only difference is in the plan view, we see lengths and widths. And if you refer back to the sheet, what's my width? My width is 75. So I'm going to mark in that 75 there now. Okay. So everything for my plan fits inside of that box. Okay, so we've got the elevation and the plan set up. So usually with these drawings, I usually start with the elevation view. So I'm going to put in my various lengths. So along the bottom, I've got 20, 15, 100, 15, 10, and 20. So I'm going to put all those in. As I put those in, I would actually tick them off on the sheet if I have time. Okay. So starting with the very first one, I'm going to put in 20. And if you're good at maths, just add on. Plus 15 would be 35. And then I have 100 onto that. So 100 plus 35 is 135. And then I have an extra 15 onto that, so there's 10, 15, and then I have another 10, and I have 20 left over. That's perfect, happy with that. So there's all my lengths there at the bottom, and what I mean by that is, you could literally come along, tick, 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 and tick. So you know what you have used, okay? Is there any other lengths that I have to put in? None along the bottom. Is there any at the top? I can see at the top there, there's a 20 at the back here, but that relates to this one as well. So I'm happy with that one. Don't have to put that one in. But I've also got measurements here. I've got 15 here at the very tip top because I've got an arc there of radius 15. And then there's a gap of 12. So 15, 12, and 83 are probably the measurements I'm going to use next. So at the very top, I'm just going to mark 15. Then after the 15, 
I'm going to bring it over to the zero. I'm going to mark 12. And after the 12, I'm going to mark 83, just to have those ready. Okay, I might need them until I'm doing maybe the plan view. But nothing wrong with putting them in up here as well. Okay, so I put those in up there. There's the 12 and there's the 83. They're probably more needed in the plan view. Okay, now I have to put in some various heights. So from the bottom, I've got a height of 30, I've a height of 40, a height of 40, and 15. So 30, 40, 40, and 15. So putting those in. So starting with the 30, plus the 40, plus the other 40 brings you to 110, plus the 15 brings me to 125. Okay, so all those heights are put in. So as I put them in, once again, tick, 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 and tick. So what I'm actually going to do now is, you can see we've kind of got a blue structure in here. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to get the overall shape of this guy first of all. Okay? And then I'll focus on the button at the very tip top at the end. But to start off, what we're actually going to have, just a heavy in our lines. I'm going to heavy in this guy, just up to here. So that's that bit done. I'm going to project any heights that I have across, just a little bit there. 41 actually goes across the whole way to about there. This one, just a little bit in. And then this one, go the whole way across. Okay. Now what I want to do is, I'm going to get this line the whole way across, and then the radius of 15. And down here you can see it's a 20. And we have a little arc down here. It tells us the distance from there to the center is 15, so the radius has to be 15 as well. So I've actually got those arcs put in. I've marked the 20, I've marked the 15. So I'm just going to get my compass here and start drawing that. So from here into here, I'm going to put that one in. And then the other one was 20, 10, and 15. Yeah, so from here to here. Okay. And there should be a horizontal line connecting those. And there we go. So that's that part done. I've also got the 15 up here, okay, that I have to get. So I've already marked that 15. It was in here, but I actually need it down a little bit further. So it's from this one, because I'm going to have the arc there. So I'm actually going to have to mark down 15 from this point here. I'm going to mark down 15. Okay, hopefully my accuracy is correct. So having marked down 15 to there. I'd always check it, so I'm happy with that one. Yeah. And there we go. So there's the arc there. And now what I'm going to do, heavy in the vertical line, and heavy in the horizontal. So that's the overall shape. We have an edge running up here, which is determining the surface S for us. Okay, that's the shape there, so I can see the surface S there. And now what we're actually going to have to start doing is working on this section inside here, and then we'll focus on this bit at the end. So you can see here, the length of this section here is the 40 and the 40, because if you follow it over, it's 40 and the 40. And it starts in line with the arc. Okay? So it actually starts in line with this arc here. So there we go. I can actually heavy in that. Okay? So that's that bit there. Now, the next little bit, I've got a couple of measurements here on the opposite side. I can see, even though this is 40 and 40, it's 80 high, at the opposite side, it's only 60. So we actually have to put in measurements on the left-hand side of 35, 60, and we have 30 left over. So I have to mark up 35. So 35 plus the 60 is 95. Okay? Having done that... That starts right on the edge, okay? It starts right at the edge. So I can actually connect a line from here to here. And a line from here to here. Having done that, once again, I'm going to heavy those in. Maybe this one. And heavy this one. Okay. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to start adding in the detail. So, 
If you actually look here, it's telling us it's 60 long from there to there. There's a gap of 10, that's fine. And then we have a gap of 10 here and here. But what's important to note is that this line here and the one above it are parallel and the one below it are also parallel as well. So we'll focus on that rectangle first. So I put in my measurement of 10 and 60. So just to measure a horizontal line, first of all, just using that as a guide, I'm going to mark 10 plus 60 will get me to 70. So that rectangle is going to be in there. Now, I need to measure perpendicular, sorry, so like that, not measuring perfectly down 10 millimeters, that won't be exact. I need to measure nearly in line with the line here. Okay, so there's the 10. So just that there. And I'll do the exact same going upwards. So going from five to six, I'd often use it like that as a guide. Mark it down. So as long as that's parallel with the inside here, I know my measurements are happy. So look, I'm doing it from the five and up to the five. So there's my little marks. Now, just a little bit of slide and set squares. Okay, and now the same above here. Okay. So there's that one done. That one. This one. And finally, this one. So there we're after getting that little section. Now the last little bit we have to do is getting in these circular bits here, a radius 25 and a radius of 30. So where is that coming from? Now that's actually, I'm glad I put this in a while ago. Remember the 15, the 12 and the 83. From the 83, if you follow it down, that's actually right in the middle of that. And then it's from the 40. So it has to be along this line. So my 83 there is actually quite helpful to me here now because that's my center line and in there I'm just going to very quickly mark the two radiuses I usually from the center I mark out 25 30 get my compass once again and my little marker now obviously on the day of your exam you're going to be using a pencil just for the purpose of these videos marker stands out better so there's the 25 and then the 30 Okay, there's the 30. Now the last little bit we have to do is we have to put in this little button at the top. It does tell us that the radius is 20 and it goes up 15. Now there's a 15 gap there already. So what we have to figure out is where is the center line. So look from the edge here, from this guy here, if we follow that up, that's where the center is. So what we're going to have to do, so there it is. What we're going to have to do is following that line up there, that's where we're going to measure, because the radius is 20, when I follow that up, I'm going to measure 20 to the right, because that's the radius, and 20 to the left, which will give me the diameter. So, complete that, follow this line up. And very easy then, from that line, I'm going to measure 20 to the right, and I'm going to measure 20 to the left. Okay. Break it up bit by bit. Before you know it, there's our button completed on the top. Okay, now what I would always do at the very end is just check for any missing details that I've missed. No, I think I've everything done there for the elevation. So that's the elevation completed. Now what we're going to move on to now is the plan. Elevation completed, so you could apply a bit of color. For the plan view, any lengths that I have, I'll bring them down. So this one here would have to come down. This one, obviously got the leg portion there. This guy here, looking down at it, I don't think I can actually see the details on that. So that's fine, I actually don't need those. I don't need that. What I do need though, is a radius for that guy. Okay, so they're all the ones that I actually think I need. What I'm now going to do is put in my widths. So I have 65 and 10 on the left hand side. So from here, I'm going to mark down 65. I should have 10 millimeters left over. Yeah, and you can see I have 10 millimeters left over. So I'm just going to project a line across there. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, 
So look, I can tick those. I've done all those. Apologies. Probably should have put those in. Okay. On the right hand side, I've done the 20, I've done the 15. On the right hand side, I've got 20, 25, and 20. So I'm going to measure those. So from this side, 20 plus the 25 will bring me to 45. I'll have 20 left over to there. Okay, so happy with that. Now, if you look at the bird's eye view, we've got an angles line and an angles line. So I have to put those in here and here. Okay, having got those in, as always, just heavy those in. Any detail that you have? So there's that section. Happy with that. Now we're going to heavy in this one. This one. And this one. Now, even though at the end of it, it curves downwards, it starts to curve downwards, I don't see that curve. I'll still see it just continue on like a rectangle. What we have to do, though, is we have to get in this structure now. If you remember the 12, the 15, and the 12, and the 83. So there was the 15, there was the 12. So now that I actually have it in the elevation, rather than measuring it again, you can see there I've already got, remember, if you remember up here we did 15 and 12. I'm not going to bring it the whole way down. I'm just going to mark it down here, using that as a guide. And then the 83 was to here. Okay, so there it is, 15 and 12. That should be 27 altogether. Yep, happy with that. So it's in between these two. Then, looking at the gap, I've got 15 and 15. So I'll put those in. So I'm going to mark from here, 15 up. And then 15 down, so 10, 15. And there we go. Okay, so there is that portion. Now what we have to do is, we obviously have a circle when we look down top, but radius 20, it's going to obviously be right in the middle. Actually look in there, it's not in the middle. You can see there it's actually in 15, so that's important. Don't just assume it's in the middle of the object. So from here it's actually up 15, so slightly off center. It says there, if you look at that measurement, you can see there the 15, and it lines up with the center. So from here I have to mark up 15, so you can see there it's not really in the middle then from there the center point is right there now using that as the center point once again compass radius 20 my radius is from here out to here because that's the distance okay so that's their button there looking down on top of it or the little dial Okay, so looking down the top, if I got the top, I've got the rectangle, I've got this, I've got the sloping surfaces, I've also got this bit here that's jutting out, okay, and it's in line with that, so you can see it comes to here, so that bit that's jutting out actually will only be there to there. Okay, there we have it guys, that there is your orthographic view complete. At the very end of any problem in autographic, you should always then check for hidden detail. So hidden detail is when you might have an edge that is not visible in, the, in any view you're looking at. So in view A, I don't think there's any hidden de detail here. But in view, the bird's eye view, when we're looking down on top of it, there is edges running underneath the object in there like that. Okay, these ones continue on in there like that. Because this surface is over the top of it, does not mean it's not there. So we do have to, excuse me, we do have to put that in as hidden detail. So that's coming from here. So for the legs, when I look down top of it, I would put this in as hidden detail there. Got another one here. Just be careful. Don't go over any of your lines. And there's my other hidden detail. Okay, so there we have it, guys. That there is the plan view completed. The last bit we have to do in this drawing, part one done, part two done. The last bit we have to do is determine the true shape of surface S. So here is, I'll actually get 
the red surfaces. Just going to go over that as best I can. There's my surface S there. And what I want to do with that is I want to get the true shape of it. So with surface S, we're going to treat this line here like a hinge. If I was to label this A, this one B, this one C, I've got four points on surface S to make it. A and B is going to be my hinge. What I'm going to do with A and B is I'm going to rotate D about A. And I'm going to rotate C about B. And essentially I'm going to hinge it out until the surface is flat out here. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And our surface S has now, like a door, after rotating out until it's in this position. And the reason it's a true shape in this position is because arrow A is looking straight at it. We can now tell that it's a true shape. The only other way we can tell it's a true shape is when we look directly at it. So here's my surface. Okay, I want to label it. Surface S, this is, I'll label it here, this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, and D. So down here is a point view. I've got A and B in the one position, and I've got C and D. So A and B are simply going to rotate those. So get your compass from A, B. That's my hinge. It's like the hinge of a door. I'm going to rotate C until it's in its new position. And I want to draw it when it has been straight. Because you remember, the elevation is like when we're looking at the object in this direction of the biro, looking in this direction. Okay? Because we were looking in this direction at the side of surface S, we didn't see it as a true shape. But now that we've rotated it and it's now straight, we can now see it as a true shape. Okay? So the new position of it is here. So C and D has now moved over here. Because they have a new position in plan, they must have a new position in elevation. So in the plan, they're here. So in elevation, C is now over here. And D has to be brought across. And that's going to be the position of D. And finally then, there's our surface S. And what I'm going to simply write in here is true shape S. Okay, just using a little highlighter to go over it then. I'm going to go over the whole guy. There's our true shape of surface S. And I'll just show you the enclosed areas by putting in the corners. And there we go. That's our true shape of the surface S there. Okay. So there you have it, guys. That there was a mock exam question there. I think it might have been from last year, 2022. Okay. Where we were just asked for the elevation and the band. But you can see, once again, quite a bit of detail involved in the drawing. Okay. I hope you found it helpful, guys, to ask that question complete.